Hi everyone, this is Angel Arts, and I just saw the Wonder Woman movie last night, uh, starring Gal Gadot, of course. Uh, it was just released this past weekend, and I thought that I would share some of my thoughts on the movie. Now I know that I don't get to do as many uh, reviews on my channel as I've been wanting to. I, I, I want to do a lot more. Um, life and the busyness of life has kind of kept me from um, making them on a regular basis, but I did want to try to make them um, when I actually felt like I had a lot of hopefully thoughtful things to actually say instead of just, oh, I love this movie or I hated this movie and yeah. I'm going to try to make the first portion of this um, review to be non-spoilerish, although I just to warn you, the vast majority of this video is going to be into spoiler territory, but I'll warn you before I start going into spo spoiler territory. Teletory. Teletory. Territory. Now, as a kid, I grew up watching the Linda Carter TV show version and it was it was probably my favorite TV show to watch pre-kindergarten actually and I still remember to this day fondly spinning around in my living room like I'm sure many many children and many fans of the Linda Carter TV show did um, and I, I don't know I, I just love the show and I always um, even now really love Linda Carter and I've had so much respect for her and um, then, of course, they finally decided to, um, to put in Wonder Woman and give her her own movie. Um, a lot of you probably, if you're watching this video, have also seen the Batman vs. Superman movie. And regardless of, of, you know, what you think of that movie, I think most people agree. Most people agree that Wonder Woman was the best part of that film. Um, I definitely am one of them. Um, and I think that they were sort of using Batman vs Superman as a way to test out her character, to test out what the response would be with Wonder Woman. And I think it was just like the overwhelming response kind of solidified, yeah, you guys making, giving Wonder Woman her own movie at last. It only took about, what, 75 years to finally give the poor character you know, her own live-action, full-on movie. She's had several TV shows of, um, and cartoons, TV shows slash cartoons, but um, it's about time, really. It's about time that um, we got a full-length superhero movie for a female, because um, I don't think we've had that in a very long time. Like, the one that I, the classics, I remember Supergirl, Again, I know that Supergirl, people have their opinions about it. When I saw it as a as a eight-year-old, nine-year-old kid, I loved the movie. Um, and then, I guess you could, if you call Catwoman, there was the Halle Berry Catwoman. Anyway, arguably, those sort of movies, uh, arguably, perhaps, could have been better. Could have been done better. And so, going into this film, I think a lot of people were hoping that they didn't drop the ball on on this Wonder Woman film just because of, of, of what it means. First of all, of course, as you know, DC um, has had a lot of catching up to do. Marvel has done an amazing job creating this expanded universe, having there be an overarching story where a series of, of full-length movies actually connect with each other. And it's brilliant because obviously it let lets you, you know, it's brilliant because it lets you um, invests you, keeps you invested in the movies and encourages you to watch their other movies. And with DC, with DC, they finally, you know, decided to, it was time for them to do the same thing, where, which is why you have a Batman versus Superman, you've got the Suicide Squad, and now you've got Wonder Woman connecting. Everything's connecting. The problem is DC, quality-wise, you know, the reviews for the DC movies overall has not been great as compared to Marvel. Wonder Woman is sort of like their last resort. Like, we gotta put out a movie that is actually good, that the critics will actually like, because otherwise, you know, 
we're not even going to be close close to competing with Marvel. And I think for a lot of people, I know that the people that I went with, my friend was saying, if this movie, you know, does not does not meet you know the right expectations, he's just done with DC. And I think many people had that attitude too, that this was the deciding, this was the movie. Since Batman and Superman didn't do it, people were hoping that this is the movie where people are like, yeah, you know, this DC DC is actually starting to, you know, pick up the pace and are actually starting to be possibly the beginning of a viable competition um, with Marvel. And of course, the other um, major importance of this movie is the female empowerment aspect of it. It's directed by a female director. I believe I believe all the writers are female, or at least most of them are female. And we've seen this too before with the Ghostbusters reboot, uh, when the decision was made to have all of the Ghostbusters be female. But what I think is really important for this movie is for the movie to be good because it's a good movie, is for the movie to be genuinely awesome not just because of you know of the novel the novelty if you want to refer to it as that and the novelty of it starring a female f superhero protagonist being directed by a female being written by you know female writers I, I I want to believe that this type of movie is genuinely good and just so happened to have all of that in it and I believe that the movie executed that phenomenally, personally. It's been getting a lot of really great reviews. Like, I think Rotten Tomatoes at some point had 97%. I think it's down to 93 or 94% by now. But still, for Rotten Tomatoes, that's ridiculously good. And, um, so, and I, I was so happy to hear that because after seeing the movie, I agree. I, I, first of all, really enjoyed the movie a lot. I thought the writing was solid. I thought the... The humor was handled well, respectfully. It wasn't campy, it wasn't cheesy. Um, for the most part, I thought. I thought that everybody involved treated this Wonder Woman movie with, with the respect that it deserved. Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, the supporting cast, you know, the, again, and the writers, the producers, the directors. I felt, you could see that a lot of care was given to this film and they wanted to give it the respect that it deserved and I think it showed. I love the way that they showed you know Diana's origin story being able to actually see the Amazons um, and their day-to-day -day and their way of living and things and just having them explain all of that I thought was done in a way that um, even people who are not familiar with the superhero genre or don't even know Wonder Woman all that well in her backstory. I thought that it was presented in a way that was very manageable and, and uh, easy to understand, but was also something that, you know, didn't bore, I guess, the hardcore comic book Wonder Woman fans. I, the supporting cast was great. I thought that they sort of, kind of, sort of, you know, drop the ball on one particular character, which again I'm going to get to when I get to the spoiler section. But overall, like the fact that they ended up, I, I love the Amazons. The Amazons, just watching them kick serious butt in general was amazing. Um, and I heard that most of the, uh, the way that they casted many of the people in, uh, in the Amazons were actual Olympic athletes um, and they did a lot of everyone did a lot of training you know horseback riding martial arts you know all that stuff which I thought is amazing many of those people in the cast did their own stunts which was phenomenal 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 plot I enjoyed a lot I know that um, I believe when Wonder Woman was first introduced in the comics, it was during the World War II era, if I remember correctly. Um, so, but we have we've had so many movies, especially superhero movies, that took place during World War II. I think it was kind of nice that they decided to make this setting into a World War One setting because World War One hasn't had as much love. I mean, that's. As, 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 as weird as that sounds, you know, giving a war love, giving much more love. I mean, it's true. World War II 
has been given a lot more attention, I think, in in the entertainment is industry more so than World War One. So I'm really glad, and I I'm, honestly I know a lot more because of that. I feel like I'm, I'm more educated about World War Two, <laughs> educated through through superhero movies, but educated through World War Two than I am through World War One because it's it's just not a setting that is handled as often. So it's super cool that they made that decision to have her participate in World War One. Chris Pine, I, I thought did a great job. Chris Depp happens to be Chris Pine happens to be my third favorite celebrity. Chris, FYI, I think many of you probably know by now who are my first two and who my number one and my number two favorite celebrity Chris's are, and also who my fourth, who my fourth celebrity Chris is. I thought that they played off of each other very well. I think the chemistry between them could have been done a little better. I mean, I didn't, I didn't disbelieve the chemistry between them. I didn't dislike the chemistry between them, but I have seen better, you know, superhero um, on-screen chemistry between characters um, a, a, a bit better, um, but this was not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Many parts of the plot um, was fairly predictable for me, especially uh, near the end. But that didn't spoil the enjoyment that I had with the movie. The score is amazing. I mean, the Wonder Woman theme, is, when it started playing in the Batman vs. Superman movie, like, the entire crowd, when she appears and her theme plays, the entire crowd in the audience just kind of, woo, like, cheered. It's such a great song. I love it. That's a song that I have started, you know, playing on loop when I'm at work, you know, programming. So, uh, yeah, that, the soundtrack overall is really, really awesome. And the visuals. I mean, I love the visuals, especially at the beginning, and the visuals that happened during some of the action scenes were very well done. Um, I, yeah, I like, like all, the, all, the, all the combat scenes. I thought that there were enough. There was a perfect balance, in my opinion. There was a perfect balance between the action scenes and then the slow, the slow scenes. Um, which I think needed to be there in order to establish character and develop character, and I and I thought that the the pacing of the movie was done very well. It was a two and a half hour film. It didn't feel like two and a half hours to me, and that's what makes a really good film that they can pack so much into it um, and not make it make it feel like it's as long as it actually is. So again, overall, it is an awesome movie. This definitely is going to be one of my favorite movies of this year. I highly, highly recommend it. And I think the message that it gives to try to empower women is not heavy-handed too much. I know some people can be really turned off by like the uber super super feminist views, and I don't think that this movie does that. I think that this movie, you know, tries to show that men and women are more equal than showing that women are superior to men, because I, I don't like, I personally don't like the idea of having one gender superior over the other. As some, as a gay man myself, I'm not a part of a movement that, you know, is, is saying that, that the people in the LGBT community is superior over the straight community. Yes, we've been oppressed and that we've been, you know, our, our rights have been threatened and we've been mistreated and all that good stuff, but, you know, the ultimate thing is I want to be equal, not superior. You know, I want to be equal, not superior. And I think, I feel like the movie did a good job of that. I, there are characters, there definitely are characters that were very, very feminist, that did, that did, you know, sort of give off that vibe that women are better than men, are superior to men. But, but, but I, I think overall, like the overall message of the movie is, you know, we're all in this together. Um, you know, we're trying, we're all fighting for the same goals. And I don't think it gets too caught up on, on who's, which side is better than the other. Okay, so now let's get to my spoiler thoughts. So if you haven't actually seen the film, you might want to consider stopping here, pausing here until you've actually seen the film. And then if you want to come back and listen to my thoughts, about some of the details, you're free, you're free to do that. 
So one of the main things that I particularly, particularly loved about this film, what I thought that made this film stand out um, over virtually all of the other superhero films that I have seen, is that unlike most other superhero films, in other hero movies, the superhero kind of does everything themselves. Like, they go around and, like, fix everything, save the day, while the mere mortals, you know, either are just hanging back or they're just in the way or, you know, are, are cowering or are just useless, you know, and they're just, okay, you can go ahead, superhero person, go ahead and fix that because we got, we got nothing. We can't do anything. In this movie... Wonder Woman actually inspires and empowers the mortals to fight along together with her so that so that they the mortals can win their own battles that's what is majorly different that I noticed in this film and I love that I love there was that one scene where you know Wonder Woman decides she's going to go over into no man's land and she sort of she, she was just the catalyst, you know, she led the charge, but as soon as she started, you know, making her way there, it like inspired all of the other soldiers around her, like, wow, maybe we can actually do this, maybe we can actually win, let's go, let's go up there and support her, you know, she didn't just single-handedly go in and just, you know, just, just fight everybody, like, she even encouraged them to join her, you know, come with me, and 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 you know, and you know, and it was, and it, then they did, and it was such, it was such a beautiful image to me to see the mortals, you know, joining and fighting side by side with, I guess, this beacon of hope, and I think that's what Wonder Woman was. She sort of was this this symbol to them, this beacon. Yeah, I mean, she did she did a lot of the heavy lifting. Don't get me wrong, literally too, figuratively and literally. But at the end of the day, she she empowered these men. How cool, how awesome is that? Having a woman empower the men. That was something I felt was a very refreshing sight to see. I, I loved also um, how they handled humor in this movie. There definitely is a lot of great moments. My favorite like moments was the part where she and Steve, Chris Pine, are on the boat and they're just having this quiet moment together. And the, the exchange between them is just super cute and super adorable and I love that. Um, but one thing that I really noticed is that, again, they weren't too heavy-handed on their humor because once you start being too heavy-handed on humor, it starts to get a little campy and cheesy. So an example is the fact that it took a while for Diana to realize what a handshake was. I don't know how many people have you noticed, my friends didn't seem to notice until I pointed out to them, but there were about three people, I would say, who met Diana in the movie and held out their hand to give her a handshake, but Diana didn't take their hand because she didn't know what a handshake was. And it was really subtle. It wasn't until she met the American Indian character, and unfortunately, I'm so sorry, I don't remember his name, but it was it was at that moment, I think he was the fourth person, that she finally started picking things up and, you know, realized what a handshake was and shook hands with, with him. So, but it was, but the whole handshake thing, like, I, again, it was so subtle that even my friends didn't necessarily catch it. Um, and I like that. I like that, you know, they weren't being like, ha, look how funny this is. She doesn't understand social cues yet and all that good stuff. Um, I thought that I thought that that was done executed very well. I really loved the internal conflict that Diana has about wanting to believe that all of the evil of mankind came from this one source, this one bad guy that she could just take down and just magically fix everything. And I think it gave a really profound message about the nature of humans, a, re the, a realistic nature of humans. And part of me felt that it would have been a really bold move, in a positive way, uh, for the movie to simply just not have a main villain. You know, once she killed that, that the guy, I forgot what his position was, a general or what, whatever, you know who I'm talking about, the one who sniffs, who snorts something and then he becomes superpower. Like, it would have, I thought it would have been really uh, 
I guess, ballsy in a good way for them to have her kill him, realize that it that maybe Ares doesn't exist after all, that sometimes, you know, like human nature can be really ugly and dark at times. And it's not, you can't just kill one source and have it just fix everything. Um, and then not, not introduce Ares in the, in the movie at all. I think that the, if the movie just ended with her doing that and then the climax would then just be them stopping the gas, stopping, you know, the gas from being spread, um, that would be, that would have been a great message that you don't necessarily need a big bad, you don't necessarily need a main villain because quite often, in fact, almost all the time, it isn't just one big bad, it isn't just one main villain that you can just stop. So. There was a part of me that felt that by introducing Ares, by actually making Ares appear later, um, sort of spoiled that message a little. Um, but I get why, because I think they needed to establish that the gods in this universe actually do exist. You know, that Zeus was actually a, was actually a, care, a person that existed, that Ares was actually a person that existed in this mythology, you know, because then you know, if Eris didn't exist, then maybe Zeus didn't exist at all. I, I don't know. But I, I still feel like even if Eris, Ares didn't appear, that doesn't mean that, you know, that Ares didn't exist. It just means he didn't appear in this, in this movie. Um, so I don't know. I, I felt that um, the movie could have done something really, really interesting if they didn't bring Ares back. However, you know, the fact that they did bring Ares back it did, you know, it did add a lot of awesome action and it did continue on with Diana's, you know, internal struggle, um, you know, the the morality of her choices, you know. So so overall, I don't I think I think the movie is great the way it is. Um, and it probably is better for making the choice that they did in the movie. It probably is better, but I just wanted to point out that that message would have been really interesting too. The Amazons, I loved everything about the Amazons. Um, first of all, I love the diversity with the Amazons. I believe in the Linda Carter TV version, all of the An Amazons were Caucasian, so I'm glad that we had a lot more diversity in that. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just glad that we spent a lot of time with the Amazons, really learning about them and knowing, just watching them work together. That big scene, the battle scene between um, between them um, and, and the men on the islands was phenomenal to watch. It was just so awesome just to see these strong, capable women strutting their stuff, showing how they work together as a team. Um, I, I, it just, it just, it was such, such a cool, cool scene. Probably one of my favorites. Um, in the entire movie, and I'm glad that they took the time, like I said, to really show what these Amazons were all about and what they were like. I kind of felt that they left something unresolved with the sniper character, and again, I apologize for not remembering, remembering names. Um, if you remember the sniper character, it seemed like they were trying to set something up with him because um, he had he was having those nightmares, and, you know, he was trying to take the shot at the tower. There was, like, another sniper and he was trying to take the shot, but he couldn't take the shot. So, you know, Diane and the rest had to, had to take him out instead. It felt like they were trying to set up the sniper guy to do something big later on, like maybe at the climax. And then nothing. Nothing really happened with him after that. I, I kind of am disappointed because... I don't know, it just felt like they forgot to do something with his character at the end, because maybe it would have been great to have had an, another moment with Diana and him, like a quiet moment where they were just talking, maybe talking to him about, about the ghosts that he's seeing, about the nightmare that he's seeing, and then maybe after that he, he did something, something cool or awesome at the climax, like maybe there was a critical character that he did have to shoot at, and then he finally was able to shoot them from very far away. We never actually got to see him do that as much, so I, I feel like they didn't do 
that character enough justice. I felt like there was a lot they could have done with him. I did like what they, the little bit between um, the actor. There was the, the actor guy with Diana, um, and they were because he was talking to her about everybody has their own battles to fight. I felt like that was a great, great thing, great little piece for his character and Diana. Um, but for the sniper guy, I think they could have done more and they should have done more with him. The last point that I wanted to make is that although I understand completely that it may have caused some viewers to not take the film as seriously as the creators intended, I, I get that by doing what I'm suggesting, you know, it might be a little bit too fan servicey. I get it. But, but, part of me still kind of missed having a very subtle, very, very subtle, you know, Linda Carter cameo. That would have been great. Maybe there was, and it was so subtle that I just didn't notice it. And perhaps a nod. I thought that fans would really appreciate, you know, a, a, a nod towards the Wonder Woman spin. Now, I don't mean that I, that I wanted, which I don't think I did. I don't think I necessarily wanted to have Wonder Woman transform by spinning. Um, I like the way that they handled, you know, her in the movie just fine because it's a lot more realistic. But I thought that, you know, this kind of exchange could have happened um, when Diana was trying on, you know, all of the different outfits. You know, you should spin around. I should what? Spin around. Why would I do that? Well, you're trying on different outfits. You should spin around when you change. Just saying. I thought it was a missed opportunity there. Anyways, uh, please put down in the comments your thoughts on the movie as well. Um, I would love to hear from you guys as usual. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. So thank you guys so much for watching my review. And until next time, love yourselves and love each other.